But I did have some questions that keep popping up. So I'm going to answer those really quick with a little bit of uh, intelligence I have. So here's one of them. Had an R422D question in the comments. Is R422D azeotropic? Well, I hate spelling too, David Bishop. So I would have spelled it wrong as well. Azeotropic refrigerant. And I got the definition there just to make, you know, let's, let's keep it above board here. Azeotropic refrigerant is a mixture of two or more substances known to boil at the same temperature. So a mixture of two or more substances known to boil at the same temperature. R422D, she don't boil at the same temperature. She has a temperature glide. And what that means is the different refrigerants that comprise R422D, and there's a few of them, there's a range of boiling temperatures. So you're going to have different temperatures for each refrigerant, and then you're going to have you're going to have glide and glide is a problem because glide means you got to flip the bottle upside down and it's just who who needs to be doing that i don't like flipping the bottle upside down another person was asking me about oil that comes in the refrigerant so most of the time oil is not included inside of a refrigerant drum but there are some refrigerants that have oils in the drum and one such refrigerant is r421a and it says we packed or packaged r421a with proprietary lubricant that's oil, all right, before you guys are like, oh, KY. No, no, it's not KY. It's pro proprietary lubricant designed to facilitate oil return to the compressor. I was looking. I know there's more than just 421A. There was a 407C that had oil built into it as well, and I believe Ralph used this 407C, but I could not find where it was. I, I didn't have the internet didn't allow me to find that out. So. Let's see if that, that's all there is. There was a 407C question. And here it is. Jay Mead. Thanks for the video. I also retrofit R22 with R407C, but not sure. Does a jug of 407C have oil? Yeah, that's, that's the same question again. I just did it out of order. No, most of them don't. And I don't know if they still make the one that did. And I don't remember what it's called. And uh, just, just change out the unit, all right? Here's a sales training. Just change out the unit. Say, hey, customer. This thing is old and it'll be like, it's nine years old. Said, no, we're changing it out. It used to be a dry charge unit, I guess. And then the last thing was super change. And I only say that super change is an option because people used to use this when changing from R22 to one of these R422 refrigerants or one of the ones that uh, required an oil change. And I was kind of wondering about super change, but you know what? It, it's funny. Because like all of the things that are part of super change that I was wondering about, like the parts of it that I was curious exactly what was in the bottle, they're proprietary things that are not listed on the safety sheet. So all I can find is a bunch of stuff that says not determined. It's flammable. Shocking. It's flammable. And it auto ignites at 180 degrees Celsius. I've never used super change. I have no faith in it. My gut feeling says that that is a snake oil devil's can, and you have to either put a small amount of oil in there or just use one of those refrigerants that are full of or have some hydrocarbon in it to help it return oil. Or this is 2023. Are we still doing this at all with R22? Is anyone still changing R22? My HVAC Life says uh, Goodman's new refrigerant will use extra virgin olive oil. I mean, may might as well. For Goodman, I would just use the thickest oil possible. If you use something that's thick, then maybe it'll plug up those holes. Do we